Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. As you know, we're going right into the celebration of Dr. King's Day. Uh, there's going to be all sorts of activities for the week and and in fact, Monday is going to be probably one of the largest um, event, and that is the 31st annual Reverend Martin Dr. King, uh, Luther King tribute, Victory Beyond the Dream. It's at their 31st year of doing this piece. It's a very, very, and it's, it, it's going to be in, at, uh, at Highland Christian Center Campus, uh, 7600 Northeast Gleason Street. It's going to be almost like all day, 11 to 6. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to get some good singing and some good background and community and meeting folks and food and vendors and the whole nine yard, uh, I think it, it would be a, 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 you know, it would be a welcome opportunity to sit back and, and just, just make, and really understand what Dr. Kent King meant. I know this is a holiday aspect of it, but mm -hmm. too often we tend to forget the, the real meaning mm -hmm. of what and why we're doing this. And um, I want to make sure we brought that piece up. There's another event here. I think when you think about Dr. King, uh, you know, he also was a uh, I was very much interested in some of the issues that we had in community, mm -hmm. uh, one of which was the, uh, the whole issue of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We, we have Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, the whole issue of Planned Parenthood and whatever. And as, a, as, a, as part of that piece, as a student rally uh, about the right to life, mm -hmm. and they've got a, quite a rally here today, in fact, as we are speaking along that particular issue. And uh, I think that's a, that's a very interesting issue. And then on Monday, I guess also, too, um, the Scandal newspaper is putting on a, a breakfast piece mm -hmm. from eight, well, a couple of hours, I guess, uh, a breakfast piece for, for from, from the business community mm -hmm. quite a bit. And they're going to do that piece. And then, like I said, right after this, at 11 o'clock at, at the community center mm -hmm. there at, at, on Highland Christian Community Center, they're going to have this other, other event. So please participate in those events. Now, every year what I try to do is that I try to identify uh, an issue, if you will, uh, within, the, within the black community. Uh, as it uh, relates to the betterment, if you will, of our community as a whole. And uh, this year, what I, I am planning to do is, uh, the, 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 the show, if you will, will be focusing on an issue that uh, was brought here, here in the Oregon Voters Digest uh, mm -hmm. by uh, a community person, you know, by the name of Baruti Artery, and you might have seen him on the show. We, we did uh, kind of like a, 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 let's see, a, a, maybe an expose or just an education, if you will, mm -hmm. on an incident that, that really had a major impact on the community. And uh, the article, appeared, there was an article that appeared in the Tribune. Now, this is the second article on, that appeared in the, in the community. And if you haven't seen the article, you can Google it. Uh, there was, it was actually it was a January 12th, 2016. And uh, on the front page, it says, uh, State Probe Looks Into Spending by Roy J. Nonprofits. And um, I'm making that point to say that the article before was a little introduction on that peace aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I've got Baruti here with me today. And, and, uh, and like I said, check out that history on the Oregon Voters Digest on YouTube. It'll give you a little bit more background in terms of how we got to this particular point. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the opportunity uh, to interview Mr. Baruti here at Baruti Artery. And he'll give us an update, put things in perspective. So it's uh, talk about his rationale for bringing this issue up to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, its impact on the black community, its impact on the community at large, mm -hmm. and where we need to go and what we need to look at in, in terms of what this what this article represents and how it's going to feed back into community across the board. Yeah, great. Welcome well, aboard, my friend. Thank you, Bruce. I, and again, I always appreciate these opportunities to come and talk about things that are going on in the community and that affect the uh, larger community itself. And I appreciate you and Portland Community Media for making this opportunity happen. Uh, because the situation that we're going to talk about is one that would not have come to the forefront if you had not taken the lead and making sure that we got the word out there. So I definitely do appreciate that. And as you said, one of the things I hope we do in the short time that we have here is to provide some context mm -hmm. to the article that has just come out in the Portland trip. And it talks about uh, some of the uh, uh, allegations of fraud and corruption against Mr. Roy J. Harris. And, but I would think we need to put that in context right. so people know, as you said, what is the background related to that. 
Secondly, I think that we need to figure out what are the lessons that we can learn from mm -hmm. this. And as you said, how can we go forward and be better as a community? Uh, because what we're dealing with, unfortunately, is someone who projected himself as a Robin Hood, but was actually robbing the hood. <laughs> and so we should not allow something like that to happen. Uh, and one of the lessons that I learned is that when we have people in the community who are taking advantage of, of other folks in the community, that needs to be addressed by concerned, responsible citizens. Mm -hmm. And when I look at this situation involving Roy J. Harris, I put it right in the category of someone who is a gang member, someone who is a drug dealer, someone who is a pimp, uh, operating in sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. These are people who are draining the community and taking advantage. Mm -hmm. When we have someone, as has been pointed out, that had received on a five-year period well over $2 million in public funds and find out that almost another half million in funds from other for-profit and non-profit organizations, we're talking about multi-million dollars of funds that had come through a couple of organizations all controlled by one person and the results are there's uh uh you know thirty five thousand dollars spent on personal vehicles and roy ran around telling people you know he brags about his stuff he puts himself out there and he and his wife had his and her convertible mercedes running around town thirty five thousand dollars he brags about his tailor uh... and we find out you know about twenty thousand dollars of public funds spent on clothes uh... custom-made clothes uh... some of it made in california and he brags about his custom-made suits he brags about his travel and over thirty three thousand dollars spent on airfare and travel and hotels and cars uh, uh, as he traveled and included in the report there were mortgage payments being made there were utilities being made on his personally owned condos in Puerto Vallarta and in Sun River and so this was the results of the report that came out and a lot of people run around and they are shocked and say, well, what happened or how did this happen? Well, this is something that has been discussed in the community for years. Roy's favorite phrase is, show me the money, show me the money. And, and so, and Roy has taken advantage of our community just like a drug dealer, just like a gang member, just like a pimp. And from my perspective, we have to deal with it the same way. One thing that I say is that I believe that when we deal with crime in the community, we should invest in prevention. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we should invest in um, uh, trying to intervene in intervention in people who are caught up in any of those particular lifestyles. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, though, at the end of the day, if we couldn't prevent them and we've tried to intervene and this person persists to take advantage of the community, they need to be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they need to be prosecuted, you know, to the greatest extent of the law. You cannot mm -hmm. continue to take advantage of the community. And so case in point is that from my standpoint, and some people said, well, Baruti, why did you go public on Roy J? Because let me tell you why. Because I had privately on many occasions talked to Roy J about the use of nonprofit funds when I, I worked for Providence and how money was being spent and said, I can't be part of this. And I discontinued funding them. And then I found out other people in the community with various uh, for-profit agencies or corporations had felt that they had been intimidated to give money to the African-American chamber and saw no results. But, and some people who said that if they didn't do it, then they got all kind of pressure applied to their bosses and other people. So people were felt in, intimidated. So the history has been that there's been a pattern of behavior, and I don't think anybody really understood the full scope of it, but this pattern of behavior has been to go out to get money, get funds, get dollars, and if anybody questions the use of the funds mm -hmm. or question accountability, then he turns and calls them a snitch. He turns and uh, starts to create lies and spreads rumors. He threatens to sue them. As you know, mm -hmm. when the first time I came on your show, <laughs> he threatened to sue me for $50 million. Yeah, both it was in the newspaper. Yeah, he, and then we got another letter. He threatened to sue us. And if we had been scared, we would have backed off. But I said, I ain't scared. Yeah, right. Because 
I think he knew. I had just went through a divorce. I didn't have nothing for him to sue to get, you know? <laughs> the, shoot, the judge gave her everything, you know? She was lying and crying, and the judge was crying, and the judge, like Richard Pryor said, you got any dreams, give us those too. <laughs> so I said, right, uh, Roy sued me for 50 million. I could care less, you know, because I'm standing on the truth. And that's the other part that throughout this, and I said I'm not getting worked up today because I had a lot of emotionalism when this was going on, and I actually felt that when the truth finally came out, I would be very excited and wanted to celebrate, you know, that the truth came out. But it actually is very sad, and it creates a very solemn uh, time for me to think about people, again, like this. This is mm -hmm. like, again, a member of our community, somebody's son, somebody's brother, who's taken advantage of the community, but it's come to the point now that they have to be called out, and they have to be held accountable mm -hmm. for what they've done. So the report, as you pointed out, is a culmination of actually mm -hmm a two-year effort. Uh, this is an investigation that started with the federal government around tax evasion. And then it moved to state government. And, 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 the, and the thing that people really need to understand about this is that this article, and hats off to the Portland Tribune for reporting on it and to the reporter for telling the truth and getting the facts out there, but when you look at, at it, the facts talks about the dollars and cents. The mm -hmm. dollars and cents that were misappropriated. But there's also, on the other side of the dollars and cents, there's human damage. The collateral damage of this are the folks' lives who some of that money could have impacted in a positive way uh, that could have been helped. And that's what happens with a lot of these nonprofits when the funds aren't used properly, those people who are the recipients or should be the recipients are mm -hmm. the ones that end up suffering as mm -hmm. a result of mm -hmm. this. And so, and as a result, the rest of the story is that as this started to unfold, a lot of people told me, as you know, Bruce, uh, uh, after I was the victim of my own personal drive-by mm -hmm. from Roy and other members of his posse, then I said, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, this, this ain't what it appears to be. Mm -hmm. There's a story behind the story. And unfortunately, you know, when it got reported by Will Ameth Week, they didn't look at the story behind the story. They just wanted to take the sensational version and tell it. But I kept saying, hold time out. Wait a minute. This is a political drive-by, y'all. Mm -hmm. So people laughed at me. People ridiculed yeah, me. Sure people did. didn't question it. And I said, you know, I'm going to stand on the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to be silent. And everybody's saying, don't say anything after it happened. Don't. I said, I got to speak up. I cannot hold this back. And what really, really got me to the point of speaking up was what moved this investigation along. And that's the number of people who sought me out to tell me how they had been taken advantage of, had they had been cheated by the same person, Roy J. Harris. And that when they spoke up, how they had been victimized, how they had been lied on, people that lost jobs, people that lost contracts. And I know one brother who lost his business as a result. And it was because we had someone operating like the black mafia, the godfather. And again, with threats of intimidation, threats of lawsuits, black folks didn't hold him accountable. And the white folks, as soon as he cried out racist or racism, they backed off. And some of the public agencies who gave these hundreds of thousands of dollars say, well, how come you didn't pursue it more? We didn't want to be called racist and yeah. be sued. Mm -hmm. And so all that to say is that when this story went forward, it wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. There's a group of about a dozen other people that have all weighed in on this. And every single person uh, is someone who has been victimized, who has been cheated, who has been lied on who have had their reputation tarnished, who have been impacted very negative from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in his wildest imaginations, he never imagined all these people he was picking off one by one, mm -hmm. like a little sniper, mm -hmm. that one day they come together and say, hold it, time out. This is shades of Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, I say this is our Bill Cosby of the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. Because for years he got away with screwing over a bunch of people because of his alleged status in the community, his alleged power in the community. But all of a sudden, somebody said, hold it, wait a minute. You know, enough is enough. When one person spoke up, then somebody else did, and somebody else did. You know, and as people have spoke up, and now that person who was perceived as being 
all powerful has been called to justice. And that's the other thing too. You know, I had a lot of people ask me over the last two years when I put my uh, neck on the line and, and spoke up and, and called out wrong, they said, well, Baruti, you know, how do you withstand, you know, all the pressure, the barrage? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and there's things I said, especially the young folks. I said, you know something? Number one, you don't let other people define you. You define yourself mm -hmm. in terms of what's important. And two, I stood on some scriptures, and I would tell anybody going through challenges and dealing with the adversary, look at Proverbs 24 and Psalms 37. And it talks over and over about how evil shall not succeed, evil will be held accountable. You know, and the biblical version is straight to the point. You know, it says very quickly, you know, that the workers of inequity will be cut down like a blade of uh, grass. Mm -hmm. uh, it said they will be extinguished just like a candlelight. And, and the thing about it in that not only had all these people come forward to me, when I found out the death of the manipulation going on, as a good steward of the community, as an elder in the community, and I went to other leaders in the community. And I started saying, hey, we got a problem. I had only seen snapshots of it over the last 10 years, but over the last two, I saw the viciousness, the viciousness in which he and his cohorts would take down anybody's reputation and damage them and their ability to earn a living and a livelihood. And when I realized that, that made me realize there's more at stake here than what meets the eye. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so when I saw uh, what was going on, and as I spoke up, you know, I stood on those scriptures, and I said to young folks, you know, you need to define yourself. When it first came out, within 48 hours, I said then, oh, I know who's behind this. I know who's behind, you know, the drive-by on me. And I put it together. I just had no idea there were so many other people and victims. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole group of folks, and many of them, uh, uh, have already talking, have all talked to the investigators, have uh, talked to or willing to talk to the reporters. And that's the part I say to folks out there, because this is the other part I say that it saddens me that we have to take time to have this conversation. Because oh, if you look at the year 2015 yeah. and all the challenges that we have in our community as it relates to the gangs and the housing, as it relates to uh, justice, uh, it relates to police brutality, and we deal with all these issues. We got a presidential race going on. You know, there's plenty of things we should be talking about. But this is a very important housekeeping piece that we yeah. have to take we advantage of that we have to deal with yeah. because ultimately yeah. what I say is that these resources that were going to him mm -hmm. we still want to have those resources mm -hmm. going into the community yeah. but we want to channel them through legitimate organizations <laughs> and people who we can count on to deliver the service and not put 90 percent in their pocket and then then buy a turkey on Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. think that's good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars and running around and give out a thousand dollar scholarship here, a thousand dollar scholarship there, give this organization five thousand, everybody talking about how good he's doing. I mean, this was what I called the okie doke. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just think that as a community, this is why we have to take time and we have to address people like this because we have to send a message that we're not going to allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. And the other part that I would say is that as I talked to the leaders about this and said, we need to deal with this, I was taken back how many of them said, we've already talked to Roy about it. Yeah. We've gone to Roy. You know how Roy is. Roy's going to do what he want to do. So many <laughs> leaders were sitting on the sidelines watching mm -hmm. him go and, and damage other people and destroy people saying, well, there's nothing we can do. And I'm saying, well, wait a minute, you know, it's, this, this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And I was very taken back, especially the men of the cloth who I approached and talked about this, who also encouraged me to be quiet and say nothing. And I said, well, wait a minute, how can you on Sunday talk about good and bad and, 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 and truth and lies and the light and the dark? And then when you confront with the right in the community, instead of lining up on the side of the truth and then lining up on the side of where the light is and lining up on the side of good versus evil, you're lining up or at least giving nodding ac acquiescence to what's going on wrong here. And some of it was because, you know, people getting crumbs off the table. People get crumbs off the table and think they part of the game, you know? And that's, and that's, you know, again, it's a con game. You know, there's movies out with Will Smith called Focus. You know, it's all about, they call the movie Focus because what a con man does is very simple. He gets you to focus over here while he's in your pocket over here. And so all these years, Roy's been doing his game and he's been deflecting any attention on anybody else and making everybody else be the bad guy and they're doing this. And the part that I, I'm just amazed in this community, definitely need to, 
do itself a check, you know, a check. You know, I'm, I'm retired and, and I can live here anyplace else, but the folks that are here need to do a process check, especially when you look at, you know, when the investigation was going on, Roy continued yeah. to, to act outside yeah. the law. Even the investigators were amazed at the audacity of someone who is now taking apart one nonprofit and starting another um, nonprofit while they're doing an investigation, transferring the Project Clean Slate money from one pot to another pot. And they were saying, we can't believe this guy. And the whole reason this information even ended up in the yeah. article, you know, this is the part that's so ironic. And this is what the Bible says, you know, a righteous man will fall seven times and rise again, but the evil man will fall right into mischief. Here's the mischief. The reason this even hit the article, if you look at the court document, it is a response from the Oregon Department of Justice to Roy J. and his attorneys, who are the plaintiffs, who sued the state of Oregon Department of Justice because they said, we don't want to give you any, any information. We don't have to tell you where that millions of dollars of public funds went. We know you, where. you know, they said that we don't have to tell you. And, and I applaud the Department of Justice. You know, yeah. they ain't perfect like no organization. Yeah. Yeah. But I applaud but they that they stepped up because I said straight up to them, this ain't a black and white issue. This ain't mm -hmm. about race. Mm -hmm. This is about good and bad, mm -hmm. legal and illegal. And this is wrong. And to go around again and to try to crucify the folks in the community. So, again, I had folks ask me and say, well, why are you carrying out a personal vendetta against Roy? Mm -hmm. I don't have no vendetta mm -hmm. against Roy. I have no vendetta. You know, the only issue I have is that you have taken advantage of the community repeatedly over and over for not years, for decades and gotten away with it. And you have intimidated people into silence, into submission. And, and, and the part, this is the part that motivated me more than anything else. And if there is anything I'm pissed about, this is what I'm pissed about. I'll tell, tell you this, Mr. Roy J. Harris and all your cohorts and all your posse. This is what I'm pissed about, that I spent 40 years in this state working hard in the public sector, the private sector, in the community, as a civic organization, uh, uh, organizer. I gave plenty of time, never asked for anything in return, did it very selfishly. I ran state agencies, multi, hundreds of millions of dollars, and had awards for the accounting of funds, and did the job, and did what I was supposed to do in the community, and stood up and did everything I could to stay out of the limelight, to stay below the radar screen, so I didn't become a target. But when I took the position in the mayor's office, then I become a target. And then Roy J., Margaret Carter, Loretta Smith, they see their opportunity to come and attack me because I'm the one who's, who has held them accountable in the past, and they attack me, and this is what pissed me off is that after those 40 years, and you read some of my background in history and the yeah. awards and recognition, when my grandchildren hear about me from their classmates in school, their parents are saying, oh yeah, that's that Arthur Ree guy who said something sexually inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And my grandchildren come into me saying, Grandpa, what is this? My friend asking me, what did you do? What did you say? And I have to explain, I called a woman beautiful. And that was sexually inappropriate. And they think I call it the B word. And I say, yeah, I did call it the B word, but it was beautiful. And so I'm pissed because that's the legacy that's perpetuated by this biased media that we got out here that will slant the story towards any Negro who come walking down the street that I don't even know what's going on. So that Negro who ain't connected to the community, that Negro who is out there taking advantage of the community and taking our money is then going feeding the media bulls stories that are not right on point and the media eats it up and the media follow it and they get it wrong and they continue to get it wrong. And as Malcolm X said, if you believe what you read in the newspaper, it will have you hating those folks who are helping you and loving the folks who are hurting you. Mm -hmm. And so that's the part that continued to bother me when I have now in retirement and all those years of service and what I've done and the whole time I was in the mix behind the political drive-by, they never mentioned my positions and what I've done and all of that. All it says is sexually inappropriate comments. And that is something that I will not back down on. And if you got the nerve then to run around and do a drive-by on me and drive-by on all these other people over all these years and get away with it and go and steal the money and then challenge and want to take out the people that hold you accountable, what, you ain't president 
a dictator of some third world country. This is America. You're going to be held accountable just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And people talk to you and you try to uh, uh, get you to change your ways and you said no and you run around clowning, acting a fool. Yeah, just like any other criminal in our community, you should be held accountable. And I didn't mean get no, that worked no, up. No, I, you know, I just... I just uh, oh and, and oh and since I'm on this road, I have to say this. This is the thing I learned. It, as you know, I've worked for two governors. I've worked for a couple of mayors. I worked in the highest level of the corporate structure in this state, uh, and uh, I've been in the inside game, the outside game, and I have come to greatly appreciate those people who operate outside the process because there's so much uh, inside baseball that gets played. Mm -hmm. There's so much you scratch my back, I scratch your back. And I watch that, I observe that. And that was the reason too, you know, that I came to Oregon Voters Digest to even tell this story. Because that media out there is biased, easily swayed by people who don't know. And so I said, no, I need to come where we can tell the story and do it in independently. Mm -hmm. And you got all these people doing inside baseball, and that's why I've supported. I now I support the candidates who I think are running for office who are gonna go in there and show true leadership. Yeah. And this is the part of leadership that is the hard part. Mm -hmm. Leadership is you got to go, you gotta ask the tough questions, yeah. you gotta be willing to turn over the stone. Nobody else is willing to under stone. Mm -hmm. uh, turnover. You got to be able to paint the vision of where we're going. You got to communicate to the people. You got to have a plan. So leadership itself is a big responsibility. But the first thing is you got to ask the tough questions. Yeah. You got to ask the tough questions. And that's why I appreciate you. I appreciate when I watch Fred Stewart sit here on your show and he talked about some of the things going on in our community. When I was home watching that, my first reaction was he ain't scared. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dang, he ain't scared. Mm -hmm. We got too many folks running around scared who are scared to speak up, who's afraid to stand up and wonder why they get taken advantage of. And then I found out Fred's running for council. And I said, you know what? And, 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 and Fred and I may not agree on every subject. Mm -hmm. I may not agree with how he talks about it. Mm -hmm. But I tell you this, I'm going to support his effort to be a candidate, to be out there raising those tough questions and, 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 and making people respond because I like the way he's not afraid to shake things up. And the same thing with Teresa Rafer, you know, the same thing. Yeah. You know, you've got to have somebody that's willing to come in. Uh, Sharon Maxwell, you know, Sharon, yeah. uh, who, who, who ran for city council. Yeah. And I saw her. She showed tremendous courage in speaking up and asking the tough questions. And so we got to get beyond just falling in line with some of these people who've been in the system for so long yeah. and think they know it all. And, and they show the front that they uh, got the community's best interests at heart. And that's not really the case. And you really got to be careful. You know, you look at this and there's so much self-serving back slapping among <laughs> that self-serving group and you look around almost every month you look in the paper and we got another event we got a dinner we got a lunch we're gonna recognize so and so and that's how see this propaganda <laughs> gets started and that's what was so slick about the con game you know let me talk about the okie doke yeah, and i know we won't run out of time but i gotta no, no, tell okay? you about the okie doke you're see okay. see and this is the part and i came on your show and I told people, I said, man, we got to talk about the okie doke. Everybody said, what do you mean you got to talk about the okie doke? <laughs> the okie doke is the con game. Yes. The okie doke is, is, is what happened. And I came on and I was call, calling out the okie doke. And as you know, the next day, then I get threat to be sued for $50 million. You know, I said, no, no. I said, the okie doke. And again, it's all about like that movie Focus. You know, you focus one way and the con goes the other way. The con game, it includes a whole bunch of self-promoting propaganda. You know, uh, pictures with... Uh, 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 legitimate folks, elected officials, skinning and grinning, you know, and for folks who don't know, skinning and grinning, you know, what that means is that we skinning and we shaking your hand and we grinning. It's so good to see you, you know, and some of us, you know, we say, oh, I got to go skin and grin tonight, you know, but we out there skinning and grinning, doing that, and then turning around and then intimidating anybody who questions or challenge you, and those are the snipers, you know, it's like the Bible says, uh, uh, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so all of a sudden, say, let me steal, let me kill, let me destroy. And then you start to create these allies. You know, and this gets into the enablers, these allies. Some of them are very conscious of what they're doing, and they do it with a wink and a nod. And some of them are very unconscious. Some of them are very well-intentioned people who are gullible and naive, and they get sucked in trying to work with somebody who they think is really serving the community.
And then you get on the other side, you get another group that's just totally scared. They know what's going on. They're scared to death. You know, don't sue me, you know. And then you get the ridicule and all that, as they say, you know. So that's part of the con game, and that's part of, of how things get enabled. I even thought, I said, when you look at the death of the monies spent, it, it tells me, you know, there's there could be reasons for a federal investigation in some of this. I hope we don't have to go that far because when we come back, I want to tell you what I think we need to do as a community hey. to move forward. Hey. You know, we need to look at this. I don't want to come back on and talk about this no more. I ain't going to come back on and well, talk on. about this person it's, it's no more. It's already on. It's yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's out there. It's, it's out done. There. It's I'm going to let there. the justice run its pace and let it go. And whoever else get caught up in it, you play with dirt, it's going to get in your eye. And so if you get some dirt in your eye, then you got to deal with that. And so all I'm saying is that as we go forward, I want to talk about how we can move forward and okay. get these resources reallocated yes. in our community. Sounds good. Well, as you can see, uh, I wanted to make sure we got the, we got the facts out, G give uh, Baruti the opportunity to articulate, bring this thing up. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break, and then I'm going to ask him some specific areas that we're going to deal with because, again, as he indicated, it's going forward. Right. And, again, that's what Dr. King was all about, and that's what we're celebrating. Yes. Thank exactly. you very much. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Thanks again for joining us here at the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Again, this is this is the Martin Luther King Day. As those of you respect, and as usual, every year I tend to bring someone on that will give something back to community, but besides community, but to the overall community. Because we're talking about an information, the educational kind of a format. And it's very important that the majority community understand what's happening in our community. Mm -hmm. We got problems. Yes. And this yes. is this is about the economics, if you will, of a community. Millions of dollars have been spent. In the, in the Northeast Corridor, mm -hmm. the black community aspect of it. And a lot of people are always asking, what are the results? What are the end of the day? But in all due respect, we gotta also look at the responsibility that they have, because they are the ones that sends the check, mm -hmm. signs off if you will. Yes. And as you, were, as you were alluding to and talking to this whole piece, uh, the idea is that there's no auditing. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like you said, it's mm -hmm. just, just blacks fighting on blacks, so what, throw out a few crumbs? And just keep on going and at the end of the day we get blamed for it so then I uh, so I appreciate the fact that you you made those points and then this is not a black on black kind of a routine this is about cleaning things up because we're always hearing this business about it mm -hmm. it takes a village to raise a child mm -hmm. well we got to clean up this village mm -hmm. and so I want to so I'm going to get in some of these areas that I want to throw out and I want you to talk a little bit about you mentioned the medium well because I remember when you came to me and we talked mm -hmm. about this piece you couldn't get to the first base with any of the media aspect of it. I mean, all due respect, the first thing that came to my hand, my mind is that what about our media? Mm -hmm. We've got two medias, and again, mm -hmm. again, in all due respect, I used to own one of those medias at one point in time mm -hmm. called the Portland Observer Newspaper, mm -hmm. and then we have the Scanner Newspaper. Mm -hmm. But I also remembered that when um, when I was approached, if you will, to not do certain stories, I, I, I went on and did the story. Mm -hmm. Like, if you will, like when the Parsons were thrown on a, on a black business in Northeast Portland. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, i.e. the entity on the outside didn't want it, came into the community and said, okay, fine, Bruce, we don't want you to have the paper anymore. Mm -hmm. And then naturally the black leadership signed off on it, and I just gave the thing up, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So but my point, so the, the one thing I was going to ask, and we, we talked about that a bit, where was the Scanner newspaper and where was the Portland Observer newspaper in putting this piece? This should have been a front-page piece when that did come up. You know what yeah. I mean? I, well, I, I want to ask yeah. you that. Well, I, straight I, up. I, and I think that's part of a bigger question in terms of how the media has handled this entire story. Yeah. And I'll share with you what I have learned. And that is that, number one, uh, uh, the Willamette Week, uh, which some people call the Willie Weekly, mm -hmm. uh, when the story first broke about the political drive-by on me, uh, 
Nigel Jaquist, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning writer uh, and someone who was recognized, too, for breaking the story on Neil Goldsmith, the former governor yeah, who was yeah. involved in a sex scandal with a 12-year-old girl and the former mayor who was and involved governor. with, uh, yeah, with a 17-year-old boy. So he broke those stories. And so however he got a story about an alleged sexual harassment incident, I don't think he asked any questions. I don't think he did any research. I think he just took it and ran with it. And when he dropped that news item in the paper, I learned that all the other newspapers or news outlets scrambled because they felt like they were getting scooped again. And so as a result, Did again, they ever call you? Did they ever call uh, you? Uh, some did, and some I just didn't did speak call to. You? Did yeah. he call you, Jake? Uh, who is that? Nigel, did he call you? Yeah, yeah, we had a very brief conversation, and I told him what I said, and I don't feel it was adequately represented in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. But but, but all I'm pointing out is I'm just trying to say how the media follows the lead of other newspapers. I, I know, yeah. And it started off wrong, incomplete. The story wasn't there. There was no look at the story behind the story. And, and I was like, you know, when I was telling people, wait a minute, this is a setup, because I knew the story behind the story. Uh, folks weren't prepared to hear that. And so I just got quiet. And then you took the Portland Mercury, who I learned through dealing with them, they feel like they're in strong competition with Will Amoth Week, and they're doing everything. They told me, well, they scooped us on this story, and we just got to find any and everything that we can. So then they went and found out, guy, I had parking tickets, and uh, found out about my divorce and mm -hmm. litigation around that, mm -hmm. and just did everything they could to demonize and ridicule me, because mm -hmm. they had gotten scooped by Will Amoth Week. Mm -hmm. Then the Oregonian jumps in, and they do exactly the same thing. Their mm -hmm. article is, as reported in Will Amoth Week, mm -hmm. you know, this is what happened, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I think if you look at uh, the internal city structure where you have a machinery there who just was trying to get things done, uh, dealing with uh, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, the chief of staff of the mayor being the alpha female, Gail Shibley, she just wanted to brush us under the carpet. And I think I was the sacrificial lamb and I chose to, you know, be a soldier and take the bullet and thinking this would go away. But as it did, as I said, that here it is years later, you know, this is something that still is following me. And then even when I went back to these people. In fact, the same thing I'm telling you guys, when the investigation started two years ago, I personally went to the mayor's office. Charlie I went Hill. to the police Charlie chief. Hill. Yeah, went to police chief Larry O'Day, because they said Roy J has gotten himself to be elected president of the national organization of black law enforcement organs, uh, executives here in Oregon. And here he is running around with a badge and leading this group. And in the rest of the country, I'm told the only people who hold those positions are sworn officers. And so he has finagled himself into this position. And how does that make us look? You know, uh, he ran a chamber who was never recognized by the national chamber. They say they're not part of the national. That's the chamber. African American and, chamber. Yeah, the African. He, you know, and so there was a whole lot of signs pointing to some improprieties here but again nobody's out there running looking for somebody to call them out you know and say you know you may have somebody in your family who a gang member you ain't out there pointing them out running them down and and trying to see unless they do something and it's put right in your face you know and they hurt you or your family and you got to deal with it you're going to be right on it you know mm -hmm. you can be on top of it but it ain't you know so anyway so i'm just saying a, a lot of that stuff is stuff that unfolded over a period of time and so with the newspapers then if you look at the portland observer newspaper it's very interesting if you look at the publishing page of the portland observer newspaper which is one of the two black owned newspapers here in portland for the folks outside this area that's watching uh there is right in the bottom is the logo of the african-american Alliance. I'm sorry, the African American Chamber of Commerce, and and it's because well, the bottom line is well, he put money into the newspaper, and so I had people for the last two years that I've been talking about this story running to me and say, have you noticed how the Portland Observer is just running so many positive articles on Roy J. has running so much propaganda, and it was just promoting him, and I laughed about it, you know. Again, I should say I should say these are allegations, but if you look at what was in the paper, mm -hmm. it was like his own self promotion machine yeah. putting out articles. So when you talk about the media, yeah, they were running articles, they weren't looking at you know what he was doing. Everything was very self-promoting, you know, and I'm, you know, you look at that and go, whoa, wait 
a minute. And then you look at on the other media side, and then in terms of the scanner, I don't know why the scanner didn't touch this story. They yeah. made a decision not to touch it, to not get involved. I don't have any issue. I, I say, I ain't throwing no stones at anybody. I ain't mad at nobody. I'm moving ahead. So I don't know why the scanner didn't jump into it and didn't pursue it and do more with it. But I'm but let's be moving fair. ahead. But let's be fair. Of the two newspapers, the scanner is well known, if you mm -hmm. will and well-respected and mm -hmm. as an expectation, mm -hmm. if you will, from the majority community to get some idea of what the story is about black folks. I'm just being straight up because that's why mm -hmm. people advertise. Mm -hmm. I know that because I was there in mm -hmm. many ways. Mm -hmm. And so again, like I said, we got to clean up our own ship too. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in a situation like this, this should have been front page news day one. Point blank. Okay, so I'm just I'm throwing that out on the table. Well, right. well, but see, even now, but, but, but got, I would even take you got a Tribune Bruce. here, Bruce. When I first came on your show t two years ago, yeah, and we talked about this, and one show led to a series of shows. Yeah. I think it was three, at least three, if not four shows. I expected then this would have been front page news. Yeah. I expected the other yeah. media was going to pick up on yeah. this. I expected yeah. local television station yeah. would have it picked did. up on it this, did. and there was a complete silence. And then they started to lend in some people's mind in the community credibility to some of the comments that Mr. Harris made over the years about how he had uh, ends with the media and how he could get negative yeah. stories ran and how he could suppress stories if he wanted. And people are saying, well, God, well, maybe he got that kind of juice. And maybe he's going to finagle himself out of here and squeeze this. Mm -hmm. I had people coming to me and say, yeah, you know, I could tell you exactly what happened and I this, but I can't say anything because I'm putting some of my funding at risk. Maybe not directly yeah. with him, but yeah. with some of his cohorts. And so they said, I can't speak up. And other people say, well, I work for the county. I work here. I can't say anything. I know. I got you know? a nonprofit. And yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. So, so as far as the media, again, I, I don't have any reason to bash anybody. I ain't well, mad. No, this is not bad. You know, You're yeah, not bad. Yeah, We're talking mad. about come to come, come to Jesus meeting yeah. right now. We mm -hmm. got to take care of business. Yeah. We're talking about this community now. I mean, we got a big election going on right now. An aspect of it. We got gentrification issues in this community. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got police issue in this community aspect of it. Mm -hmm. We got our youth. I mean, we can go on and on yeah. and on. And where is our leadership? And in mm -hmm. fact. I noticed in the Willamette Week, and we talked about that, mm -hmm. I, saw, I noticed another article about the foster care issue aspect mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And there was Margaret Carter's name in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I've dug in that a little bit, and that doesn't look good either. Mm -hmm. I'll just be right up front with it. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's in the paper now on an ongoing basis, and they keep bringing the same entity uh, talking about foster care, mm -hmm. i.e. talking about her mm -hmm. piece and using her as a scapegoat aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Somebody signed off. Mm -hmm. We know this whole process yeah. when she mm -hmm. was a legislature, and then all of a sudden she mm -hmm. was appointed by a former governor, Ted Kulin, uh, Kulingoski, mm -hmm. Who, who basically appointed her as, as the director of that particular program, mm -hmm. okay? And that stuff was still going on mm -hmm. then. My point is that, again, no one, why did they do this? Mm -hmm. She didn't do this on her own. You mm -hmm. understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, I mean, we know about what mm -hmm. the Yon Child Care Center was all about, aspect of it, but nobody says anything about it. So now, here she's retired. You know, she's 80 years old. I saw the birthday. In fact, I even acknowledge the fact that she had a birthday. But the fact of the matter is, I remember when I was involved in that process, when I was the Port mm -hmm. Observer, when we, when we basically mm -hmm. put the boundaries around to get that district to see if we can get someone black elected to the legislature, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And Ron and I went down to the legislature mm -hmm. and fought and lobbied and this, that, and the other. And what's but happened since you, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? So in all due respect, if I had to do it all over again, I am not going to promote anybody going out of the community. Mm -hmm. I want to vote people. I want to I wanna support people that are in, in the community, like Fred and others. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Who are going to be right here and going to stay in the community mm -hmm. and talk about these issues. So yeah. I, I want to make sure yeah. we're very clear that the media in our community has to, in all due respect, communicate. Because mm -hmm. there's an expectation as to why they give you the ad. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and then, and, and the other part, too, is that when you look at all the media, uh, is that we all, we read the media and you think you're dealing with an unbiased reporter oh, who is putting the facts on the table. And I've come, again, to believe that when you look at... Uh, all these publications, there are oh, yeah. certain spins and certain angles that get put on stories because as a result, in my opinion, of misrepresentation with Will Lamb of the Week, uh, uh, initially they never mentioned any of my background and yeah. they jumped yeah. on this beautiful statement that anytime my name come up, they're quick to put it out there. You know, they keep oh, yeah. trying to justify, oh, yeah. you know, oh, this guy is, uh, uh, you know, he said the wrong thing, you know, and so, so I, I, I look at that as something that's <laughs> going to happen. But see, you touched on something that I think is very critical when you talk about about, 
the enablers, you know, that we as citizens, we definitely need to hold accountable all these agencies who were funding monies through yes, all these nonprofits that's right. that have been pilfered. That's right. And be it the foster care right. agency or be it uh, monies going into Project Clean Slate. Mm -hmm. And we have to told, let mm -hmm. them know that they're going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of them, again, are people who are intimidated because they may be called racist. But let them know this ain't about race. This is about mm -hmm. accountability mm -hmm. of public resources mm -hmm. uh, that they need to know that. And we need to make sure they know, you know, and that some of the stuff, as I said, and some of the stuff, when you read the paper, uh, they didn't mention the city of Portland in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are some of the money from the city involved. of Portland. Yeah, that's right. And it seems to me when you have this amount of fraud over this period of time, and they only went back to 2008, there's folks come to me with a lot of stuff pre-2008 that they are prepared to testify on. But when you look at this, I think every agency who channeled any money through any of those organizations should be doing an audit of their books and see what they spent and how it was spent, what was the return on that investment, and, and make sure that things happen. And then, if it was inappropriate, get it put in place. You know, you know because because the you, other part, you, again, see, you know. I, I mentioned the city of Portland because the article didn't mention it, but here's Roy J. throughout all of this, even while the investigation is going on, now he's tied into the city of Portland purchasing department. He's sitting on the committee that's reviewing contracts, and there's been allegations. You've heard some. I've heard oh, some. former commissioner people, Randy Leonard was the one that put him in that position. Well, but, but just being straight up with well, well, gave him, a, gave, him his, gave him his own business well, card. Well, see, well, see mean, that happened with the port. That was Portland Development Commission. This is something entirely different. It has piece. to do with another new entity that's been created through the purchasing department. He sits on a committee that gets to review contracts, and he's already been out there challenging people, telling them what he read in their contract, telling people, yes, if this happens, then I can do this, you know, and all that kind of well, stuff, you know, and I'm I think that's I'm the kind it. of stuff that I'm saying that we have to hold our elected officials responsible that's right. for, and that's I right. really think the person who should be calling for a city of, of Portland audit is Nick Fish, who's been his bosom buddy throughout all of this, who's been so quick to run around and say, my friend, my friend, and take pictures and hug him and, and, and kiss him and, you know, be right up there, and again, mm -hmm. I don't know if he's consciously knowing what's going on, I think oh, it's, he knows. It, he knows or if it's unconscious. No, he knows but either going. way, you know, say he has certainly gotten used and played, and and maybe it's been mutual benefits. But mm -hmm. as a representative on city council, I think he should be saying, let's look at the city money that went through these entities and was it properly used? And you know, and so I just think that should happen. And if not, as I say, ultimately maybe it takes a federal investigation to come in and look at where all these monies went because we, it was just a massive con game, yeah. and a lot of people either passively or are, 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 are consciously participated. Well, you know what I'm doing, Peggy. I mean, you, you, you bring up things, you know, it sort of brings me back to th some of the things in, the, in our review. When I think about Nick Fish, I remember when he made this big to-do on the front page of the Oregonian about uh, working with Bernie, going down to, mm -hmm. to D.C. about uh, uh, some, uh, some individual who had died to make sure to get, a, get his Medal of Honor kind of routine. Mm -hmm. He went down there and took pictures with the president, et cetera, et cetera. And I started thinking about what about uh, one of the most decorated military person right here in Oregon happens to have been a federal judge that just retired. His name was Antra Haggerty. Mm -hmm. He was a Marine. Mm -hmm. He was one of the most decorated military person from the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think up to this date. Mm -hmm. You got my point? Yeah. And then yeah. Fish, here he is doing this stuff out of the community mm -hmm. rather than recognizing someone here locally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got many folks out that I can mention, if mm -hmm. you will, but they're not part of this process yeah. and cut off from the deal. Yeah. That's a very well, important well, piece. And, and, and as a follow-up to that, I... That's I, Nick Fish. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of... Uh, uh, questions we have of how our elected officials spend their time and focus their energies and 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 one and recently somebody pointed out to me and I was very taken back by this it says that uh, that we have had over 500 uh, black males killed uh, in this community through uh, gun violence mm -hmm. over 500 and and at the same time you know for the same period you know I guess this goes way back over a period of time since we've been keeping numbers, but we've had a couple hundred folks, you know, killed by the Portland police in mm -hmm. different circumstances. Mm -hmm. But 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 this is the part that came out. It said, Baruti, do you recognize that your calling Loretta Smith beautiful <laughs> led to her having four different press conferences in front of the camera to talk about that she was offended about being called beautiful four times. <laughs> but she never once has gone in front of the camera to talk about the violence that's going on and mm -hmm. youth killing youth here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and again, and that's the reason 
I say, you know, there's folks out there. Well, gentrification. I think, I, mean, I think we can do better. I just think we can do better. Let, let me ask you about this. First of all, let me read this little quickie paragraph. You, we sort of mentioned it, but I want to make this very clear because I'm reading from the Tribune. I mean, this mm -hmm. is not coming from just you and I. You yeah, yeah. Well, and that report, I give them a lot. The yeah. reporter did a great job. But understand what yeah. I'm saying is it's Tribune. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because if we facts. said it's a different ballgame. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Facts. But anyway, this, this is word for word. Jay set up, Roy Jay set up the Independent Development Enterprise Alliance, IDEA, in 1994, and it soon received tax exempt status. It is the umbrella organization for Jay's African American Chamber of Commerce Project Clean Slate and Ride Connection Senior Shuttle Program. Okay, that's one point I want to make. Okay, now I've been approached uh, since we last talked by folks who, who said to me, Well, Bruce, what's going to happen to Project Stay Clean? You know, we need that. I mean, mm -hmm. we're coming back here, we can't find any jobs, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And, and then, then one of the guys said, Yeah, just in fact, one of the things that happened to me is that, Bruce, I went down to to, to maybe get the counseling piece, and and uh, Mr. J came up to me and asked me for three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But then, it, but in the article, it talks about the fact that he was already funded. Well, now what about? And then now I called up the attorney general. I was like, you know, we okay. talked about this uh, before, mm -hmm. and I said, to follow up on the on the deal. And she said, well, Bruce, we're we're investigating. I said, well, what about Project Stay Clean? Mm -hmm. well, what's going to happen to those mm -hmm. folks? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Are we going to still be in business? Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. Here. She says, she said, why don't you call up the Mr. J's attorney? Because Mr. J's attorney is now the, the one who's basically running this organization. Mm -hmm. So he can stay in there. The gentleman's name is Charles Potoster. I don't know. How, well, P-A-T-E-R-N-O-S-T-E-R. -E -E and, and he's basically been representing Roy yeah. J. So the point, I, the point I'm making is, is that the person was trying to blame you and our folk, no due respect, the program. Mm -hmm. We're the bad guys. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You get my mm -hmm. point? But the fact, man, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. These are the facts. I mean, it laid out bullet for bullet exactly what happened mm -hmm. to the monies. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that the people understand. You can Google this article mm -hmm. on Portland Tribune, mm -hmm. okay? And as you can know, and I, I, didn't, I didn't stop Mr. Mr. Baruti here from sharing his feelings about this because that's, that's again, be, being a journalist as I've been in the past mm -hmm. and own a newspaper, you can't get all of what you said in one paragraph. Mm -hmm. You have to yeah. get the, their total ten. Otherwise, you just fill it in the way you want to. But when the article comes out, it's not you. You're right. See, right. so that's why I will say to you again, and I always do it that. this way. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to be able to get the right yeah. justice. Any other, let's, let's talk about the little, do you know anything about the, what happened to Project Clean State? Or well, are they still going to well, be in business well, or what? Well, let me just share with you a little bit I know, uh, is that uh, uh, Project Clean Slate, as I've been told, was originally a Multnomah County program. Okay. You know, Roy is taking credit for creating Project Clean Slate. Project Clean Slate was a program there. already uh, in Multnomah County. It was a somewhat dormant program that he slid into, and I think uh, saw it as a vehicle to maybe do some good, but also a chance to get some money. And uh, when he came into that program, uh, for the people who participated, there was a $50 charge, which was uh, something so that people who took part in this program to get your records expunged, it would show some indication. You're going to come to the meetings, you're going to show up, you're going to do what you're supposed to do. It was a $50 charge, which was somewhat nominal. Uh, but, but for the people you know, who had to participate, it was a commitment. And gradually, that fifty dollars increased to three hundred and fifty dollars uh, hmm. per person. So, and there are people who got into the program and who borrowed money and who paid that and who came away very frustrated that they didn't feel like they got what they were expecting. And uh, some people were very have been and still are very upset about that. Well, part of the state investigation is that when they checked the records, a little bit of that I heard. I, and again, I don't know everything they know, but I know there were big questions around it because. Uh, when they talk about in the news article itself that outside of the money from the public agency mm -hmm. there's another four hundred thousand right. dollars that uh, was collected and they're trying to figure out where that came from well some of that is at three hundred and fifty dollars per person which amounted to over twenty thousand dollars per year so uh, and it's not accounted for mm -hmm. there's other monies related to uh, fundraising events that were held and mm -hmm. there's no record in terms of where those funds were and and what happened to them. Uh, so those are just some of the questions that have come up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as I said, now 
uh, he's pushing back to not turn over any more information because I just think it starts to peel back the onion to the point to say, well, who were some of the benefactors, mm -hmm. you know, of this, you know, and I heard uh, that too. But and some... and I said, you know, and I'm not going to run around pointing fingers, yeah. naming names, you know. Let them uh, do the job. The investigation needs to, you know, go where the yeah. investigation goes. But uh, but sadly, you know, people with a wink and a nod, you know, mm -hmm. have have been enablers mm -hmm. in, in this game. And that's what I'm saying that we need to stop. When I have people in uh, the next generation, you know, I'm mm -hmm. over 60. I got people in their 40s, people in their 20s who are <laughs> coming to me and say, how did you guys allow this to happen? Looking at, <laughs> at me and us as elders in the community who are supposed to be truth tellers. That's and, why we're doing the and show. sharing wisdom. And that's what I told that's them. That's why we're you doing know, the show. They say, that when the truth came out, you know, that I mean it's 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 come all the yep. way out, and it's taken two years. Yes, to get yes. this article. Yeah, two years. <laughs> You're correct. And I, and it'd be interesting to see whether or not the Willamette Week now and the Oregonian and and in all due respect, some of his other folks in the media because they are responsible too. And I, I want yeah. you to spend some time. Yeah. Let's make sure we bring that point across. They are just as responsible, big time. Well, well, here's a, yeah, even further big time. Than that. Just even, like you mentioned about that, that fifty dollars yeah. you're talking yeah. about, I'd like to see the contract. For the monies, was yeah. that included? And in they're saying yeah. that you can collect fifty dollars as an incentive yeah. to get in the program. You know, for a yeah. fact, that's well, not there. Well, well, you're totally right. The other media needs to step up. And, some work. and and so again, it shows you what we're dealing with. Again, when I call a lady beautiful, it ends up one newspaper reports it. Oh, they yes. all jump on that, and it ended up on every television station. Yes, you know. But you haven't seen a television station yet talk okay. about one of the biggest potential nonprofit frauds in the not state not of not Oregon. It hasn't come out, and that's because again. And he's he's got his hooks in with a lot of folks, and there's a lot of people sitting there with egg on their face, and a lot of people are going to try to brush this under there. But the way we move forward, this is what I want to say. Quick, we have we resources that have yeah. been dedicated to this community. We want to see them continue. I think we need to get people who are the stakeholders, leadership in this community, to come together to start talking about how the monies that went to the chamber, went to the Project Clean Slate, can be redirected. And we need people from Urban League, the Albina Ministerial Alliance, and any other organizations out there, the churches to come together. Media. And let's recover from this and let's go forward. Right. We ain't got to spend right. a lot of That's time right. looking back. That's but right. we want to keep the money going to the right folks for the right reasons. It's very, very important. You know, Rudy, this has been this has been good. I mean, I'll be right up front with you. It's been two years in the running, but in all due respect, we still have more work to do. Okay, mm -hmm. and I would hope, as you indicated, it take as they say, it takes a village to bake a child. It takes all the folks that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. that you might have been doing some things, but let's get back to the table. Mm -hmm. So, Bernie Scanner, the Observer newspaper, contact this man. Do do an overview on this whole piece. And again, uh, this is again, this is Dr. King's day. Do celebrate it with respect. Thank you for being my my in, my identity, if you will. For celebrating Dr. King's Day. Thank you for and that thank invitation. You very, very appreciate much, sir. It. You, right. you are very worthwhile and you did a good job. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, folks. I really appreciate you being with us and, and do go out and, and do respect that day of Dr. King's Day and visit one of the organizational meetings or whatever. So we have, have a good one and next week we'll have another dynamic show and looking forward to seeing you. And I'll, I'll make this point again that and Eugene told me not to make, but as George Page used to always say, back to what you believe in. Have a good one. Take care. I think I got it.